Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a copper age Bulgarian woman. This is what she looked like. According to my Shakoto, she had brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and brown hair. Uh, with snipper free she's actually predicted to have green or hazel eyes, red hair and white skin. With um, hair ID she's predicted to have wavy or curly hair which is why you can see I depicted her hair. Uh, with uh, curly or wavy hair. Uh, she actually had one of the derived variants in MC1R, so this is the ginger gene. This is why uh, Snipper Free actually predicts her to have uh, red hair. She had blue eye haplotype 1, BH1. She was heterozygous for BH2, um, but she did not have BH3 or BH4. She had this very interesting gene set that increases her risk of baldness by seven times. Uh, somebody on CodeGen even wrote, it's over for this gene set. I swear that was not me, okay. Uh, she had she was a carrier for red hair. This is one of the variants that she was uh, heterozygous for in MC1R. And she was heterozygous for the DRD2's pro pro variant. So a kind of intermediate amount of D2 dopamine receptors, right? And she was A2, A2 for TAC1 variation in DRD2, which means uh, normal risk of OCD, a target of the skin, Zia, ADHD, and Parkinson's. This is a very typical uh, genotype for a human, but not a typical genotype for anybody who's not human. Like in, on my channel, you, you've seen me cover gorillas, chimps, various monkeys, or Neanderthals. They all score a 1A1 here. According to her genotype in Comte's Val Met variation, she was Vorior with the IO, which means Val Val, which means uh, quicker reuptake of dopamine, which means less dopamine in the system. Uh, problems with attention, with motivation, however, better stress resiliency. This is a typical non-European genotype, right? Everybody outside of Europe has this. And she also had uh, derived OXTR, so she's got the sociopath gene, at least in this variation here. And um, she did not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Uh, she did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is not so surprising because it's a very recent mutation and all of these ancient folks, they don't really have it. Uh, and for when it comes to myopia, she actually had the European mutation that protects against myopia, so that's good because uh, she would not need glasses. When it comes to polygenic traits, she had a fairly high risk score for Crohn's disease, a average risk score for Parkinson's disease, an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Um, she had a very high risk score for asthma. She had a pretty low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she had a very low risk score for coronary heart disease, a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes, and a very low risk score for type 1 diabetes. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Here you can notice she's not scoring any Baltic, any of the Indo-European components here. And that's because it's a Copper Age Bulgarian, right? It's not a modern Bulgarian, it's a Bulgarian before the Indo-Europeans came there. So she's got no Indo-European admixture, uh, no kind of Northern, no kind of Indo-European admixture. And she's basically just a European farmer. So this is this is pretty much what a U European farmer would score with um, these calculators on GED match, right? Not a modern Bulgarian, not a modern Greek or Bulgarian. And with... Um, G25, you can see more of the same. She's scoring like, like a typical European farmer. She's closest to Sardinians. She's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus something from the Middle East, which is very different from what a modern person from Bulgaria would score. Obviously, modern Bulgarians are much more northern, uh, much more eastern and northern, and she's very southern and western. Here you can see her result with MDLP K11. Once again, sort of more of the same. You see EHG category here does not actually represent eastern hunter-gatherers. It's just some kind of Caucasus, Caucasus shift. So she's got a little bit of Caucasus admixture, which is not so atypical for even the farmers. She's closest to the farmers, as you can see, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of farmer plus some kind of corded wear, some kind of Indo-European admixture. Right? So maybe there is a little bit of Indo-European admixture relative to the LBK, but she's still a farmer. This is what she scores with Harappa World. Here you can see she's actually scoring a lot of Caucasian, but... The Caucasian on this calculator does not represent CHG. Don't get fooled. Just because it's Caucasian doesn't mean it's CHG. Uh, she's not scoring any Baloch, which is the actual CHG component here. So she's, she doesn't have CHG admixture, right? As, at least not as much as 27%. She's got like 12% CHG, according to Pandy and ALK10, where the CHG category actually does represent Caucasus. 
which is not a lot, you know, 12%, not a lot. Uh, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Iraqi Jewish or Sardinian plus Cypriot. And the Cypriot, the, the reason she's getting modeled as Sardinian plus Levant is actually because of the little bit of CHG admixture that she has. Finally, this is what she scores with Pandian LK10. Here you can see once again she's scoring around 11%, 11 11.5% of Caucasus HG admixture. Uh, which is, you know, pretty typical for farmers in the Balkans, and she's actually closest to Iceman here, which is very interesting. Uh, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Iceman plus Armenian Middle Bronze Age, or Iceman plus Sertsurblia, so relative to the Iceman, she's got a little bit of Caucasus admixture, and she's closest to Sardinians here with the modern, po modern population oracle, and with the modern oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Palestinian, or Sardinian plus Syrian, basically a mixture of Sardinian and somebody from the Levant. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. She's actually scoring 6% Ancestral North Eurasian, which is, isn't that much, but it's probably mostly from the Caucasus HG admixture that she's got. And she's closest to Sardinians here, followed by European Neolithic, and she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of European Farmer, plus Pashtun or Patan or Kalash, basically a mixture of... Here it's different, here it's kind of different, because previously it was a mixture of Sardinian plus uh, Levant, but here it's a mixture of European Farmer plus some kind of West Asian groups. This is what she scores with Gidrosia K3, mostly West Eurasian. Clearly, she's got a lot of modern West Eurasian drift, even though uh, even though this is a Copper Age individual, she's very modern in her genetics. Thank you guys for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Goodbye.